Hey everybody, I'm Starfish. I'm a Twitch streamer. I play a lot of Resident Evil challenge runs and uh, a variety of horror games as well. I've been streaming for a little over two years and I wanted to make a video to sort of collect my thoughts around what growing on Twitch in 2024 looks like. Because when I go on YouTube and you type in how to grow on Twitch, right? You're going to see almost like these memes of like, you don't grow on Twitch. You should be making a YouTube channel or TikToks. Build your audience there because discoverability makes a lot more sense. And then eventually you tell everyone to, to come over to Twitch. And that is absolutely a thing, right? Like if you want to create that kind of content and you feel like, you, like that, that's a good thing for your channel, go ahead and do it. But I assume you clicked on this video because you're already on Twitch and you want to grow your community, right? So let's take a look here. This is me. I'm Starfish. Uh, I have 508 followers. I have probably 12 to, to 20 average viewers. And you might be thinking, like, uh, that's, that's not really a lot, Starfish. Like, what? Almost all of my growth in my two years has happened this year over the last couple of months because I really started to explore how to play sort of the game of Twitch, how to grow a community. Because when we talk about YouTube and we talk about TikTok, that, those are uh, follower-based uh, applications, social media, right? Like you're looking to create this, this flashy content so that when someone is brushing through, they stop for a second, get you a like, and even better, hopefully a follow, right? Like you're trying to burn really hot and really fast to build a following. Twitch is not a follower based uh, service. It's community based and it's unlike anything else. And all of those things work together but with Twitch, you're building a community. So this is sort of me here. Uh, in 30 days, counting May 5th through June 3rd, my average viewers are 12, and it's been going up. Uh, and, and this kind of, depending on what I'm playing, this can go up much higher or a bit lower. I'm, you don't have to worry too much about your average viewers right away until you start really driving to get to partner. Um, or obviously, if you want to be, become an affiliate, right? Uh, my followers have gone up 124 follows in 30 days. My subscriptions, my subscribers have gone up 55 subscriptions, and my revenue was $294. So for a side hustle, this is, this is pretty solid, right? And it's uh, a lot of fun doing it. It's my hobby. I get to play my favorite games. I get to build a community, and I have a really good time. So this isn't like a top 10 list of how to grow your channel. This is just some things that I've noticed and changed about myself, and I saw some really solid results. And the good news is, if you're just starting out, if you're trying to become an affiliate or a partner, I think you can pull things from this video and, uh, and, and, and improve your content. So the first thing I did, and I don't know what made me think of this, but, uh, but, but I went ahead and did it anyway, is I, I changed my username. My username used to be T Daddy Starfish. It was a name that was given to me by a friend years ago when we signed up for Xbox Live. And I carried that name over to my Twitch channel because I was playing games. I was playing games on Xbox and PlayStation. Why not keep my username the same? What I found, though, is that T Daddy Starfish, it's too long. And it was maybe a bit odd for people to say, do they call me T? Do they call me Daddy? Do they call me Starfish? So most of the time when I would tune into people's streams or, or whatever, uh, they, they either wouldn't say my name, they would just respond to my comment. Um, like, hey, what's up? Are you playing Resident Evil? Uh, yeah, we are. Once I updated my name to Starfish, it was easier for people to acknowledge me. So when I went to their stream and said, hey, what's up? They'd go, hey, welcome in, Starfish. Or um, when I'm starting my streams, you know, like... Uh, hey, everybody, I'm Starfish. Welcome to the, the stream. We're going to be playing Resident Evil today. It's just a bite-sized name, and, uh, and it's very easy to say and add on. And my first goal when changing that was just to get people to say Starfish. You want that name to stick out and ring because when you're, when you're on Twitch, you're building a business, a brand, a community, and you want people to say your name. Like, it's not... Uh, Apple is an Apple Computer Inc. 
they, that's their official business name. They go by Apple, right? Like a short name, Nike running shoes. Like you just say Nike. So you want to start to think long term about your brand and you really want to simplify that name because when people remember your name and it's very simple, they're going to acknowledge you. And um, when they go and try to find you later, it's going to be so much easier. And even though my name is starfish zero underscore zero, you can usually type in starfish and I should come up at the top or, or close to the top, right? Like here's some other, other names that use the word starfish, but this is leading with that name, right? It's very, very simple. And it's still tied to who I am and my roots. T Daddy Starfish got shortened to Starfish. So it's still something that I feel is me. It's just shortened. Now, the next thing about the name is that, uh, you know, I didn't choose to, to use my name Tyler. You know, Tyler plays games or something. I chose uh, an animal, right? Uh, or a sea creature. And then you can start to build a brand on top of that. So I have a theme now, right? Like, blue pink ocean stuff uh and then because i'm a resident evil streamer i took the logo and i added some elements to uh to resident evil right so i added jill valentine's blue cap the beret with a star on it and then sometimes i'll have like a gun in the starfish hand because i'm shooting zombies or something right but also if we zoom in here I created emotes once I became an affiliate that are related to the starfish, right? So I have a little maracas or a shaking starfish. It's a very palatable brand for people to enjoy. The second thing I did when, uh, when kind of rebranding myself and understanding how Twitch works is I, I, I went from streaming every day for hours and hours and hours to kind of uh, creating a ratio for how I'm going to spend my time on Twitch. Because if you're just hitting live and you're playing your favorite games for hours every day, uh, you're, you're, you're missing the opportunity to help others grow their community and then start to blend their community with yours. So I kind of came up with like a one-to-one -one ratio to start. For every hour that I stream... I'm going to spend an hour finding other streamers and spending time in their stream, right? So I play a lot of Resident Evil, so I would go in and search for Resident Evil. Now, this is this is a very solid game franchise. Like, it, I'm just lucky that it happens to be my favorite game franchise. I wouldn't recommend playing Resident Evil if you're not really, like, a fan or want to play it. Um, you want to play something that, that you enjoy. But like Resident Evil 1, for example, which is my main game that I play, that has currently right now, during the, the day here, the first game, it's got a very um, niche audience. It's, it's very, uh, very loyal fan base, but there's 47 viewers right now, right? So it's very easy for me to go into a couple of these streams, like this is my favorite game right here, and I can say, all right, who's this? Son. Let me, uh, let me go in, give them a follow, and say hello, and get to know their community a bit. Like, this isn't, you don't go in and say, hey, I'm a streamer, come, come, come follow me. You, you go in with good intentions. You, you go in because you love the game, because you want to learn new things about the game and learn about uh, how to run a successful stream. Like, you need to go in and explore others' pages and get to know them. And every once in a while, especially if they have a, a lower commun a smaller community, they'll ask you if you're a streamer and then you could say yeah i am and you can follow each other right but for now you don't want to go in and say you're a streamer you just want to go in and follow them twitch has a, a sort of an unspoken um not rule set but like a culture and some streamers will give clear rules most will i'd say about what to do and not do in their stream and they may say like don't come in and promote yourself or maybe they'll say uh, I, I want to help streamers grow and, uh, and feel free to introduce yourself as a streamer or not, right? So before you get into just jumping in and streaming every hour of the day and trying to grow that way, do the one-to-one, -one, right? So you want to spend, I'm, this is just a number I came up with, but every hour that you stream, 
go and spend an hour in someone else's stream. You really want to share the love and grow. And you're going to also learn a lot about the community and what you should do and not do by spending time in other streams. And eventually they'll understand that, hey, you are a streamer and, and there you go, right? Um, let's talk a little bit about like when you're actually live though. So here we are on my channel and this took me a long time to learn um, because like I said, I kind of signed up for Twitch and didn't really know what I was doing. I wasn't watching much much of on Twitch. I wasn't really watching the streamers. I was just kind of figuring it out by streaming live. And I would notice when I would when I would play a game and I'd have like very low viewership, let's say one to, to, to three viewers, someone would pop in the chat and they'd say like, hey, and then I'd be like, hey, you know, because in my head, I'm the streamer here. Like you should be tuning in and asking me questions about the game. You should be celebrating me. I'm the center here. And you came to my channel because you think that my stream is going to be entertainment for you. Usually when, when you're very low, um, you have a very low viewership. Like, for example, if we go back to Resident Evil. Oops. If we go back to Resident Evil. And I'm a viewer, right? And I'm like, oh, let me find some, let me find a Resident Evil player. Here's someone with 24 views. Here's someone with 14 views. The thumbnails look solid. It's the game I want. Um, you know, like, why Why would I ever go into the one viewer person, right? Like, other people aren't there, so why should I be? I'm always going to choose these if I'm strictly just a viewer, right? The reason someone went into your stream all the way at the bottom of the list, and let's choose, like, another game with more viewers, Resident Evil 4, right? The reason someone went all the way to the bottom of this carousel, look, I'm still scrolling, and they picked you to watch is most likely because they're a streamer and they're looking to build their community. But like I said, Twitch has a culture where you can't just show up to someone's stream and say, hey, I'm a streamer. Will you watch me? Like, no, you just showed up to my stream. Why would you do that? So they're, they're just going to say, hey right and then if they're really engaging they might say like what's your favorite resident evil game how long have you been playing right they're not just thinking that you're just the greatest thing in the world you're a beginner right you're still learning how to do things they're most likely a streamer trying to build their community or they're they're trying to help a friend build their community right like and they might say i'm actually i spend a lot of time over at saw next stream he's awesome so what I would recommend when you're first starting out is say, oh, hey, Starfish, welcome in. You a fan of Resident Evil? It's probably all right. You clicked on my stream. Are you a streamer? Do you, do you stream at all? Ask them if they're a streamer. And then when they say yes, because they are, you can say like, oh, awesome. I'm going I'm to give you a follow. So click on their name, give them a follow, and, and then try to find time to go over to their stream when they're live, right? And, and, and get to know the people there. Because they're going to now say, hey, this person's a streamer. Check them out, right? Like they most likely will do that for you. Um, that was my first big mistake early on is I just thought I was the center of the world. And when someone tunes in, it's because they found my stream because I picked the perfect keywords and, and it showed up on the front page and now they're here. No, they, they specifically searched that category, scrolled all the way at the bottom and found you, right? So, so treat someone showing up to your stream as a time to get to know who they are on Twitch. And if they say, no, I'm just actually a fan of the game, that's awesome. Then you can actually just talk to them about the game. You can say what you're doing. You can say what they're doing in the game, your goals. Like you can, you can just talk about the game or, or, or whatever. But if you find out that they're a streamer, you know, give them a follow tell them that you follow them because Twitch isn't really good at telling that it's sending out notifications like that. You have to verbally tell them that they're a follower. And then on to the next bit here, which took me forever to learn is that Twitch has commands built into the chat. You may have seen them if you watch them, right? So by typing forward slash into the chat bar, 
it's going to start to populate all of these commands. And it can be overwhelming if you're new, but there's there's two that I want you to know about at the at, by the end of this video, right? And the first one is shout out. Right? Here it is. Shout out and then it's going to highlight some text and it's going to allow you to put in someone's name. All right. So uh, if I were to do Arclay Ranger, who I highly recommend, he's a Resident Evil marathoner. He's a great guy. Arclay Ranger, right? Oh, I have to be live. Okay. But it's going to put Arclay's name at the top of the chat temporarily. It's going to put a little follow button next to them. And it's also going to send a notification to their alerts that you shouted them out. So if they're in the stream or not. But someone tunes in, they say, hey, you found out they're a streamer. Give them a follow. Tell them you did that. And then give them a shout out. So you're telling your viewers to give them a follow. Just be careful because that person might be like a bot or something. So you kind of want to like find out that they're a streamer and get a good vibe before you shout them out. But since you're so, since you have such a small community early on, it's not like you have 100 viewers and you, you just told them all to follow a bot. I think this is perfectly fine to do with everyone who tunes into your stream that you find out is a streamer, right? Because it's a community and you're going to be building your community while also helping others build theirs so that intermingling can happen, right? You want that to happen. And then um, as you're doing that, the, the second... And final command that you should know about, at least at first, is rating. Rating means that you're gonna you're about to end your stream, and you're gonna take all of your viewers that you currently have, and you and them are gonna go over to another streamer. It's gonna alert that streamer live that you rated in, and that you brought over X amount of viewers. And they're going to most likely give you a shout out. And they're going to say, Starfish, thank you so much for the raid. What were you doing? Oh, I was playing Resident Evil. It was a challenge run. I'm just typing in, right? Well, here, here's a shout out. Everyone give, give, give Starfish a follow. And then you're going to follow the person that you raided. So you're going to raid in. You're going to give them a follow. Boom. Now, they, depending on how large they are, if they're a smaller streamer, they're most likely going to follow back. And you may get, you know, a couple one, two followers from their chat to follow you. But uh, it's a slow but but solid way to build your community. Unlike YouTube and TikTok, where, like I said, it's hot and bright and you can get hundreds of likes and follows very quickly, Twitch, because they're spending so much time with your live content, it's a slower build, but the people, if you're doing a solid job, they'll continue to come back and support you unlike TikTok where your video another video just has to land in someone's lap for you to like it again. It's very hard to get a loyal follower who's going to search your name and look for you, right? It's just algorithm based. Twitch doesn't really use an algorithm like that. You want to slowly build a solid community, and you're going to do that by finding out who the other streamers are, giving them a shout out, giving them a follow, and then at the end of every stream, you're going to raid. That's 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 what you got to do. And then coupling that with like going in and networking. So when you're not live, go into Resident Evil or any game that you want to play. Find this person. Give them a follow. Give them a chat. Like you need to you need to do this on Twitch. I, I barely followed anyone. I was just going to, you know, I'm Starfish. I'm going to go live. I'm going to play my favorite games and people are going to love me. Like, no, they're not. You have to go in and and follow and meet other people with your new simplified username and bring them over. Now, I use the example of Resident Evil because that is the game I play, but I know a lot of people play much larger games like Minecraft. And Minecraft is going to have a ton. This is actually the Minecraft page, it looks like. Yeah, here we go, the category. If you were to play a big game like this, Minecraft, Fortnite, Call of Duty, which you can, if, if that's what you want to do, like, go for it. But remember that they have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the list, and they're going to be passing people with, you know, 3K viewers, 200 viewers, 60 viewers, 40 viewers. Like, why would they ever click on 
you at the very, very bottom. And not only will you be at the bottom, you're going to be at the bottom with a bunch of people. So now there's like even less probability of getting clicked on. And that's why people say you need to create YouTubes, TikToks, whatever to, to get people to find you. And that's, that's so true, especially if you're going to play a large game like this. But if we take, you know, Crash Bandicoot, uh, let's just do the OG. Well, now you're, you see a game with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight people. And someone who's networking could literally spend, you know, 10 minutes and go into each one very quickly and say hello, etc. It's a game that has a strong following. It's retro. There's a lot of like culture around it. And there's some discoverability as well for people who are searching through that category. So I would recommend at least early on to pick some games with a little less traffic, but that's going to ultimately be up to you because if you literally love Minecraft and that's the only game you play IRL, then you obviously are going to be passionate and you can, and you can play that. Uh, and then finally, I would say because you're new at streaming and you're learning how to add microphones and alerts, etc., you want to have a bit of a routine so when something goes wrong or you're trying to fix it, you're not also learning how to play a hard game or a game that has a lot of concentration. So that's why something like Crash Bandicoot, you could play this every single day. Every, well, every day that you want to stream, right? That you're not networking. So I'm going to play Crash Bandicoot. My goal is to beat the 100% the game or take no damage. You know, that way that this game is consistent. You're building that fan base and then as you're learning how to deal with technical issues like microphones and adding alerts and chats etc the game still stays the same you're very comfortable with it and consistent and you're just focusing on how to learn how to be a streamer how to talk to people how to how to uh, network and follow them etc i would pick the same game and i think if you follow th that chunk of information when you first start you will start to slowly grow your community, but also grow as a streamer. And then you can start to create uh, or learn how to create engaging TikToks and YouTubes. If you want to do all of it simultaneously, that's really up to you. I would still follow that ratio advice. So like stream for an hour, network for 30 minutes, create short TikToks and YouTube shorts for 30 minutes. Do not go and spend hours and hours and hours just streaming because the community is not going to really grow if you're just always online. You need to do the networking side of it as well, and you will absolutely grow on Twitch in 2024.